I believe that for you. I believe that that hope is going to rise up in your heart. And I believe not only hope is going to rise up in your heart, but I believe that faith is going to rise up in your heart. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you ready? Are you ready to receive? The in, un, in the indestructible, ever living, everlasting word of God. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, we come to you now in the gracious and mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we come to you thanking you for this day. We thank you, Father, for this opportunity that you have given us. And Lord, we thank you, Father, that you are working with us to confirm your word with signs following. And so, Lord, we come thanking you for this day. We thank you, Father, for this great opportunity. And, Lord, I release the anointing right now. I release the anointing right now. I bind every spirit of infirmity, sickness, and disease. I bind it by the root right now in the name of Jesus. Now, Father, I release my faith and I release the anointing right now in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Oh, my, fa my father, my father, my father, my father. Oh, my friend, receive that anointing right now. Receive it right now in Jesus' name. There's an anointing that is flowing right now. Receive it right now. Amen. And all the sickness and all the disease and everything that you are experiencing right now, in the name of Jesus, it is bound up in the spiritual realm. Now, you have to pay attention and you have to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to you today. Amen. I'm just a vessel. I am not God. Amen. I am his voice for you for this minute, for this hour. Now you have to pay attention and you got to hear what the spirit of God is saying. Amen. Glory to God. And if you can do that, if you can do that, I'm telling you nothing is impossible for you. Cause see, if you could, cause see faith coming by hearing faith coming by hearing. Amen. And hearing by the word of God. And as I release the anointing, as I release the word of God, as I release that which God has placed within my heart for you tonight, I believe that you will receive God's in his omnipotent, his omnipresence, his very nature is going to rest upon you. Hallelujah. I believe that and I want you to have that tonight. Amen. This is your season. This is your hour to receive the word of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, now if you if you're coming on the air, just say just just say hello to me. Just wave your hand. Just say hello. Amen. I would like to know that you're here and amen and uh I would like to just 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 uh be able to to uh, to just see your see your see your see your face, glory to God. Because if you don't let me know you're here, I will never know that you're here. Amen. Just let me know that you're here. I appreciate that. And then if you if you are blessed by this message, I want you to share it also. If you are blessed by this message, I want you to share it. If you have any loved ones right now that are sick, you have any loved one right now that are that are need to be encouraged, that need that need their, their faith strengthened, I want to encourage you right now to, to, to tell them to tune in right now. Amen. You have loved ones or family members that need that need to hear from heaven. Amen. I'm asking you right now to have them to tune in. Amen. And let them uh, come on board and, and hear what the Spirit of God is saying to them. Amen. Because you see, the Word of God is for all of us. We all have a place in God. Amen. We all have a place in God because he is our father. He is our father. Hallelujah. Amen. Look like this thing is, uh, I'm going to have to turn this around. Look like glory to God. That's why, that's why I want you to just prepare yourself because I got to, I got to rearrange this, uh, this Facebook real quick. Amen. Because it looked like it's, uh, not, Aaron properly. So just excuse me for a second here while I pull this out and, and turn it around the other way. Amen. Glory to God. There you go. There you go. Now let, 
Aleluya. Aleluya. <laughs> yeah, they're still not acting right. My, 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 my. This is not good. This is not good. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So now I got to figure out how I'm going to do this. Because for some reason, it's not working out like it should tonight. Amen. I don't know why it's acting up. Amen. But nevertheless, we're going to do, we're going to, we're going to make it work one way or the other. We're going to make it work one way or the other. Just be patient with me just a second and we're going to make it work. Amen. For some reason, you don't want to, don't want to line up for me. Don't want to turn and uh, work right for me. And I don't know why. But nevertheless, we are going to make it right. Are y'all, y'all hanging in there, right? Good, good, good. Amen. Greg, I see you. Amen. Just hang on in there for just another second or so. We're going to have this thing working right in just a minute. It's going to be all right just a minute. Hallelujah. Glory to God. There we go. Just give me another second. Oh, Sister Sandra, God bless you. Hallelujah. Now, I don't understand what's going on with my system here. Amen. It's kind of messing with me a little bit today for some reason. And I don't understand why. It never did it before. Glory to God. But we're going to. Let's just do it this way. Let's just do it this way. We're going to make it happen just like this. We're going to make it happen. Here we go. Here we go. Yep, there we go. There we go. I told you we are going to make it happen. <laughs> Amen. Can't keep a man of God down. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Can't, can't keep a man of God down. Man of God going to make it work for him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. See there? It's all good. Now, now let's uh, now let's pray. Let's pray again because that 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 kind of that kind of uh, messed me around a little bit. But nevertheless, we serve a good God. Father, we thank you once again. Now, Lord, as we come to share this message today, we believe, Father, that you're going to touch lives all around the world. Father, there are many people that are tuning in to this broadcast on, on each of these networks that we are on. And Father, as they come, I'm asking you, Father, that you would speak to their heart. I pray, Father, they have ears, hear, ears to hear and their heart is receptive to your word. And Father, I pray that the anointing will lift the burdens and destroy the yokes in Jesus' name and set the captives free. Because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. So glad to have you guys join us today. And I pray that God will just say something today that will cause your faith to rise to the next level. So that you can receive the promise of the Father, which is your health. Your miracle breakthrough for your health. Amen. Now, I teach this a lot. You know why? Because it worked for me. And it worked for my family. Amen. And uh and uh, the, there are people that come to my church when they are when they when they get sick, they come to my church, and then once they get healed, well, you, sometimes you see them again, sometimes you don't. It's not it's, I don't I don't have no beef with that. You know why? Because I'm a I'm just a servant of God. I'm just a servant of God, and I'm and I'm not here trying to 
I'm not here to do nothing but to, to do what God has called me to do. Amen. And that is to minister to you to cause your faith to rise to the next level. I appreciate each and every one of you. Now, let's get into some word. Amen. I want to turn your attention, amen, to uh, to the a word that, that's going to, I believe, that's going to benefit our hearts and our lives. Amen. I want you to turn to the book of Mark. Book of Mark, chapter 10. Book of Mark, chapter 10. Amen. In the book of Mark, chapter 10, and let's go to verse number 46. I think that's where I want to go. Chapter 10, Mark 10. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Look at verse chap look at verse chapter 10, chapter 10 and verse number Verse number 46. Amen. Are you there? All right. Praise the Lord. And it reads, And they came to Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, set by the wayside, set by the highway, beside, I'm, I, what was he doing there? He was, he was begging. Amen. He was begging. Amen. I'm going to, I'm going to turn it here so I, so I can see the words a little bit better. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Mark chapter 10. Are you there? Good, good, good. Now look at verse number 46 again. Verse number 46. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. And, and they came to Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, a great number of people and blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out. Notice what he said. When he noticed that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to do what? He began to cry out. He began to cry out. Glory to God. Glory to God. And say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And men had charged him that he should hold his peace, but he cried out the more a great deal. Son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort. Arise, he calleth thee. Arise, he calleth thee. Oh, hallelujah. Which one of you is he's calling tonight? Which one of you is, is, is that, that he's calling tonight? Because I believe, I believe that the Lord is calling out tonight to someone that's in need, someone that needs a breakthrough, someone that is hurting, someone that is in pain. God is calling out for that someone right now. And God is looking for you. He's looking for that one that is crying out. He's looking for that one that, that, that will not be quiet because, because of the people, because of the relatives, because of the, 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 the workers around. He's looking for that one that will cry out from the bottom of their heart, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. He's crying out. And God is looking for you to cry out. He's looking for you to, to show that you believe that he is who he said that he is. Amen. And you know, the Bible says in Mark in Hebrew chapter 11, verse number six, he said, but without faith, it is impossible. 
to please him. For he that come to God must believe. See, blind Bartimaeus, he heard, he had already heard all about all the miracles that this man did. I, I can imagine because when he when he knew that it was Jesus, when he saw that it was Jesus, when he heard that it was Jesus, he began to cry out, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And they tried to make him be quiet. Be quiet, man. You you don't just be quiet. Let the man alone. He he taking care of important people. And he cried out the more. They tried to make him be quiet. He, he said, Oh no, this is this this is my opportunity. This is my chance. This is my day for my breakthrough. This is my miracle day. And he cried out the more, Jesus, <laughs> thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still right there in his tracks. He just stood still. And he called the man. He had the man to be to, to, to come forth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, folks, when the Lord, when the Lord called for you, when the Lord called for you to come forth, it's time for you to come forth. Amen. It's time for you to come forth. Hallelujah. He came forth, and notice what he said right here in verse number, in verse number, in verse number, uh, what we at? Verse number 46, 47. Look at verse number 48. 40. Look at, come on now. Don't, come on now. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Verse number, verse number 48. It said, and many charged him that he should hold his peace. But he cried the, the, the more, a great deal. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Verse number 49. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And he called, and they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. Be of good comfort. Arise, he calleth thee. And he, now notice what, notice what he said in verse number 50. And he cast away his old he cast away his garment. Amen. What was he doing? He prepared himself for something new. He prepared himself for something that he didn't have. He made preparation to receive. How did he do that? By casting off the old. Casting off that old attitude. Casting off that old mindset. Casting off that old, that old way of thinking, that old stinky thinking. <laughs> Amen. He just cast it off. Why did he cast it off? Because he was preparing to receive something that was going to really make a difference in his life. Hallelujah. Look what it says right here in verse number, verse number uh, 50. This is uh, Mark chapter 10, verse number 50. And he cast, and he cast, away, and he cast in away. His garment rolled his roll, he cast off his garment, rose, and came to Jesus. He rose and came to Jesus. Verse 51. And Jesus answered and said unto him. Now notice this, because you see, you're gonna to have to come to Jesus. And you're gonna and, and he's gonna he gonna he's gonna want you to talk to him. He's going to want you to share with him what is it in your heart that you are needing. Amen. And notice what he said about him, verse number, verse number 52, he says. No, verse number 51. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What would thou that I should do unto thee? And the blind man said unto him, He said, Lord. Notice he did not come bolstering. He did not come demanding that he came with a, a humble spirit. No, notice this. Now you got to see this because you see, you got to come in the presence of God the way that's going to get his attention. Amen. You don't want to turn him away from you. You don't want him to ignore you. You want him to acknowledge you. The blind man, he didn't, Come to Jesus, uh, bolstering. He, he, they told him to be quiet, but he, he, he cried out the more. The, the Bible said, 
he cried out a great deal more. And he, and he began to say, Jesus, have mercy on me. Are you at the point right now where, where you believing for the Lord to just show mercy? Are you at that point right now that you're about to give up? Don't allow the enemy to, to bring you to that point. Jesus is right there with you right now. He's passing by your avenue right now. And all you got to do is release your faith and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And I believe that the Lord will stop right in his track, just like he did for this blind man. And as you continue to cry out to him, and I believe that the Lord will, he will stop and he will, he will, and he will uh, uh, listen to your requests. Amen. Look what he said right here in verse number, verse number uh, uh, 51. It says in Mark chapter 10, verse number 51. And Jesus answered and said unto him, what would thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. That I might receive my sight. Hallelujah. And, and, and Jesus said unto him, Jesus said unto him. Now notice what Jesus, notice how Jesus replied to this, to this blind man. Jesus, he didn't, look at, look how he replied. And Jesus said unto him, go thy way, thy faith, notice what he said, thy faith has made thee what? Thy faith has made thee whole. Thy faith has made thee whole. Now notice he, Jesus did not lay hands upon him. Jesus did not go and grab him and hug him and say, come on, son, be healed right now. Be healed right now. No, Jesus did not touch him. Jesus did not wrap his arm around him. Jesus only spoke to him. He only spoke to him. That's why it's so important, folks, that we hear what God is saying in the word because the word has the ability of God residing in it. The word has the presence of God in it. The word has the power and the anointing of God in it. That's why it's so important that we put away everything that we think the word said and just take a hold to what the word is actually saying. <clears throat> Take a hold to what the word is actually saying, because what the word is saying is a whole. It, it's not. It's not what. It's not. It's not going to line up with what you're thinking, because you see, the enemy can mess with your thinking, but the word is not going to change. The word is going to remain the same. I remember when I was sick and I was lying in my bed crying like a baby. Didn't have no money. Didn't have no insurance. Didn't have. Didn't have nothing. Just a lot of pain in my body. And I was just lying there crying and God spoke to me. He said, get up and read your Bible. And I got up and I started looking around trying to see who that talking to me. I even looked outside the door trying to see who was talking to me. And you know what? I didn't see no one. And I began to think. Now I said, now I know the devil ain't going to tell me to get up and read my Bible. So that must be God. So I started reading my Bible and I opened my Bible to the book of Mark. I opened my Bible to the book of Mark. Amen. See, some of you right now, some of you right now, you you, you probably, I, I don't know how much you read your Bible, but you know what? You need to pick that Bible up sometime and read. If you don't have time to read, just like, you know, just like me sometimes, I'm on the road traveling a lot. I don't have time to read a lot. Amen. But I, I can, I can listen to it on my, I can listen to it on my, on, in my car. I can listen to my Bible. Amen. I don't, I, I may not have the time to read it like I want to read, but I can listen to it. And you know what? It just is good as and sometimes it's even better, amen, because sometimes I can sit there and as they reading, as they reading the Bible to me, I'm rehearsing exactly what they're saying right back, you know, I'm right, I'm talking right in line with the word, why? Because I, faith coming by hearing, and hearing by the word of God, and I listen to that word, I allow that word to, to go beyond my, my intellect, my, uh, I, I let it go beyond my mental faculties, and I and I allow it to rest in my spirit, Amen. I let the God, I let the Word of God rest in my spirit, Amen. Good people, God bless you, Amen, Amen. So the Word of God rest in my people, in, in side, rest in my spirit, Amen. And it began to produce, it began to produce the life and the nature of God. Oh, hallelujah, folks. You, you need to listen to the word. You need to just read the word. Get, get involved with the word. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now notice what it says right here in verse number 52. Verse number 52. And Jesus said unto him, go thy way. Glory to God. Go thy way. He said, thy faith has made thee whole. 
He said, thy faith has made thee whole. And the Bible said, immediately he received his sight. Now, he didn't receive his sight because someone laid hands upon him. He didn't receive his sight because someone uh, prophesied over him. No. He received his sight because he desired it from the Lord. Notice what he said right here. He, he, verse number 51. Look at verse number 51. Verse, no, let's go back to verse number 50 because see, when he came, he cast off his old. He cast off the old. Look at verse number 50. He said, and he, and he cast away his, his garment, rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, what would thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him. Now notice the blind man is talking. He's not just sitting there trying to, uh, uh, you know my heart, my Lord, you, you know all the things that I've been through. No, no. He asked, Jesus said, what would thou have me, what should I, what would you have me to do? Amen. What would thou that, that I should do unto thee? He asked him a specific question. He, and, and, the, and the man didn't try to give him a whole sermon. He didn't try to tell him his whole history. No, he said, and he said, the blind man said, Lord, that I might receive my sight. He didn't say I was broke. He didn't say I, 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 I was hungry. He didn't say I, 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 I've, been, I've been, been wrestling with these people trying to get to you all this time. And, and all of a sudden, you, you know, no, nothing like that came up out of his mouth. Nothing like that came out of his mouth. What came out of his mouth was his exact need came out of his mouth. He said, Lord, that I might receive my sight, that I might receive my sight. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody getting this thing today. Somebody getting this thing. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. My God, the power of God is all over me right now. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Now, Father, that anointing that I'm experiencing right now in the name of Jesus, let them experience it right now. Those that are listening, those that are listening right now, let them experience the same anointing right now in Jesus' name. Father, touch your people. Touch your people, those that have an ear to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. Father, touch them right now. I agree with their faith. I agree with their faith in the name of Jesus. Release your faith right now because I'm in agreement with your faith. I'm in agreement with your faith right now. Glory to God. Amen. So now look what he says right here. Look what he says right here in verse number 50. He says, in verse number 51, I mean, verse number 51. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Jesus answered said unto him, see, when you go to talking to the Lord, when you go to, to when you, when you, when you begin to petition the Lord, don't be surprised if, if right down in the, in the pit of your stomach, you hear these words, what would you have me to do for you? Amen. What is it that you would have me to do for you? Amen. Then don't try to, don't try to give, don't try to give him a whole sermon. Amen. Be precise. Be pacific in your request. Amen. And don't ask him unless you believe he can do it. Don't ask him unless you believe that he can do it. You don't want to ask in doubt. You don't want to ask in unbelief. You want to ask in faith. This is a lot of our, a lot of our problems sometimes. We ask, but we don't ask in faith. Amen. We want to ask in faith. Because God is looking at our faith. He's not looking at what we think. He's looking at our hearts, folks. He's looking at our hearts. So when you when you come to God, and when you said when you when he comes to you and because when you begin to call upon the name, look what happened to blind Bartimaeus. Mills. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And the people said, Be quiet. Don't you, you're disturbing the, the no, you're not disturbing him. He's not going to get nervous. He's not going to get upset because you called upon his name. He didn't get upset with this blind man. He's not going to get upset with you. He's going to listen to you. He's going to, he's going to, he's going to listen to you, folks. He's going to listen to you. And when he began to listen to you, then you tell him what you want. Say, Lord, that I might receive my healing. The doctor said, I have cancer. Lord, that I might receive my healing. 
that this cancer would not dis destroy me because you said in your word in Psalm 107, in verse 20, that you sent your word and you healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Father, I am one of them that you sent your word to. Now, let me be delivered from this destruction. Oh, thank you, Father. Amen. See, God know what he has already said because you see, he tells us in the book of Isaiah, chapter 53, <clears throat> that he bore our sicknesses and he carried our diseases and with and by his stripes, the Bible says that we are, this is not going to happen. This is not something that might happen. This is something that he declared that, that has happened. He said that we are healed. We are healed. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And then he says in, in the book of Matthew chapter 8, and I think that verse number 17, that it was spoken by the, Isaiah the prophet. See, this is some years later uh, confirming what he was saying right there. Amen. Confirm what he was saying right there in the book of Isaiah, in the book of Matthew chapter 8, verse number 17, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet saying, himself took our infirmity and bare our sicknesses. See, I, Matthew confirmed what Isaiah prophesied some years, some years, some years ago, and then come down through several years later, Matthew confirmed what he said. Amen. Confirms it because he, he went about and healing all and then in, that it might be fulfilled what was spoken by Isaiah the prophet. Amen. And then it says in first Peter chapter two and verse number 24 said himself took our infirmity. Amen. In his own body on the tree. Glory to God. Amen. So that by whose stripes we were healed. That's past it. Everything that he did, God has already done. Now he's expecting us to lay hold to what he has already done. He expecting us to lay hold to what he's already done. He bore our sickness, folks, and he carried our diseases. Amen. Blind bottom ills. He didn't have he didn't have this to read this. He couldn't read this. He, he didn't know this was written. Amen. But it is written. He bore our sicknesses. He carried our diseases. And by his stripes, the Bible said, we are healed. We are healed. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. Now, now, now notice here, notice here, this, this man here, he was crying out. Jesus was coming. He was coming into Jericho. Amen. The Bible said, the Bible said, but so, but so shall it be among you, but whosoever shall be great among you shall be your minister. And whosoever and who and whosoever of you will be the chiefest shall be the servant of all. Amen. Verse number 45 says, For even the Son of Man cometh, even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. So he came to minister and to give his life for a ransom. Amen. What is a ransom? A ransom is a is a is a payment for something that he wanted to obtain. And what is that he wanted to obtain? He wanted to obtain your, oh my God. He wanted to obtain your trust. He wanted you to believe him. He wanted you to accept him. He wanted you to receive him. Hallelujah. So notice what he said in verse number 46. He says and that it might, that, that and they came to Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Tamirus, sat by the way highway side begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, see, I can imagine that much, much people had been talking about the miracles and the signs and the wonders that this man had done. People, I mean, the word was spreading like wildfire. Amen. Word was spreading like Wi-Fi. They didn't have internet like we had today. They didn't have all they had was the word of mouth, folks. All they had was the word of mouth. Glory to God. Amen. But notice what he says. Notice what he says right there. Amen. He was he was sitting at the wayside begging, and when he when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out, 
and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. How many of you know that the Lord's mercies is renewed daily? The mercies of the Lord is renewed daily. Glory to God. The mercy that he had then is not, is, he still has it. It's still available. His mercy is still available for you today. It's still available for me today. Amen. Amen. See, see, reason why I started teaching on healing again, every time the weather began to change, in the, especially in the, from the summer to the fall, many people began to get sick and many people began to, to get colds and flus and everything. And so I started teaching on this. I started teaching on healing very strongly during this time of the year, every year. Amen. Simply because that uh, I, I, I like for my family to be resting under this healing anointing. Amen. That when the when the enemy try to come upon them, try to put these colds and these flus upon them. Amen. That I, I, I prophesy over them. And I said, every germ and every virus that touches your body in the name of Jesus shall die instantly. Amen. Because because this is what I believe. And, and believe me, believe me, folks. Uh, my my daughter came home one, one day uh, last year from from school. They sent her home uh, sick. Amen. We had to go about and pick her up. She was sick. And when we got home, um, my wife wanted to give her all this medicine and everything. I said, wait a minute before you start giving her medicine. Let me just minister along the line of the word of God. Amen. She had a big high fever and everything. And I said, let me minister along the lines of the word of God. And then I, and as I was ministering, when I got done ministering on, on lines of healing, and then all of a sudden, the word came up in my spirit how Peter's mother was lying in the house sick of a fever and Jesus laid his hand upon her and that fever left her. Amen. And, and, and when God showed me that it, it, it didn't, I didn't read it. It just came up in my spirit and my daughter was dealing with the same thing of a, a, a high fever. And I laid my hand upon my daughter and all of a sudden, instead of her being out of school for three, four days and for a week or so because of the flu, amen, I laid my hand upon that daughter, my, my daughter, that, and that thing just, shoo, that fever just left her. And all of a sudden she's up and running around again like nothing ever happened. She went back. We kept out of school that next day just to make sure everything was all right. But she went right back to school and, and they was amazed at how she recovered so fast. Amen. See, I'm telling you what works. The word of God will work when you apply it, uh, when you apply it through faith. Faith in God's word will release the power of God on your behalf. I'm going to say that again. Faith in God's word will release the God-given power on your behalf. Now, folks, you all have the same ability to do what I'm telling you, to do what I'm saying. Amen. Each and every one of you can minister to your family member. You can minister to anyone you choose to minister to. Amen. Especially if they are believers. Especially if they are believers. Amen. See, see, because you see, the Bible tells us how to do that. The Bible tells us how to do that. Since we, now, let's look, let, now look right here again, verse... Now, let's, let's read right here again. Mark chapter 11. Excuse me. Mark chapter 10, I mean. Mark chapter 10 and verse number... Let's go to verse number uh, 46 through 51. Verse number 46 through 51. Amen. Are you still with me? Amen. Glory to God. Amen. So notice what he says right here. Glory to God. Notice what he said right here. 46... He said, and when and when they came to Jericho, and as as he went out of as and he, and they came to Jericho, and as they went out of Jericho with his disciples, and great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, set by the uh, the son of Timaeus, set by the highway side begging. Amen. And when he heard, notice what he said. And when he heard, when he heard. You see, I'm telling you that right now, you are in position right now to receive your breakthrough, to receive your miracle, to receive your healing. Right now, you are in a position to receive. And all you have to do is release your faith and believe. Release your faith. Amen. Simply release your faith. Amen. Release your faith. Glory to God. Glory to God. Now notice what he says right here. Because you see, I'm in agreement with you right now. God wants to touch you. 
right where you are. God want now it doesn't matter whether you're in Pakistan, it doesn't matter if you're in India, it doesn't matter if you're in Africa, it doesn't matter if you're in Canada, it doesn't matter if you in in Russia, it doesn't matter if you in in Zimbabwe, it doesn't matter if you are in uh, Philippines, wherever you are, the spirit of the Lord is there right now to pick you up out of your circumstance. Amen. But you got to release your faith and you got to believe this word. You got to believe it. Amen. Hallelujah. You got to be just like this uh, uh, blind bottom is. You got to cry. You got to cry out for his mercy. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. You got to cry out. Amen. From the bottom of your heart, cry out to the Lord. Amen. And don't ask him for something that you don't believe he can do. Whatever you ask him for, believe that he can do it. Believe that he can do it. Amen. God is real. Don't be saying God isn't real. Who do you think you are? God is real. You foul, unclean spirit. I bind you now. Come out of that person in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now look what it says right here. Look what it says right here. In, in verse number 47, it says, Mark chapter 10, verse number 47. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he, be, he began to cry out and saying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace. The people, see, some, so many times when we begin to cry out to the Lord, people get in the way. People just begin to try to stop you. Just like this, this person right here talking about God is not real. This is nothing but a demonic force that is trying to steal your faith. Amen. And I want to encourage you, all of you, don't let no devil tell you that God is not real. Because God is more real to me than that idiot that's saying that God is not real. Because that's an idiot. <laughs> that's, way I, that's, not, not, you, that's the way I see that. Amen. That's the way I see that. Amen. Anyone, if anybody want to be a fool, let him be fool still. Glory to God. Glory to God. So, so, it, says, so, so it says right here in verse number, in verse number 48. Verse number 40 said, And many charged him that he should hold his peace. But he cried the more, great deal, a great deal. Thou son of David. And now, now he's crying out from the bottom of his heart. He's crying out from the bottom of his heart. He said, Thou son of David. Thou son of David. Have mercy on me. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thou son of David. Have mercy on me. And when he, when he becomes so sincere, Jesus stopped in his tracks. Oh, my friend. Jesus stopped in his tracks. See, when you are crying, not just out of curiosity, but when you are crying out in faith, Jesus will stop in his tracks just for you. I can show you another incident where Jesus was stopped in his tracks, amen, because of the need that was represented, amen. Glory to God. He stopped in his track. I want you to turn to the, since you're already in Mark, go to chapter five. Go to chapter five, amen. Mark chapter five. And look down here at verse number 25. Verse number 25. Mark chapter five, verse number 25. This is another example of Jesus being stopped in his tracks. Amen. But this time, the virtue come out of him. Glory to God. Notice what it says right here, Mark chapter 5, and verse number 25. And a certain woman which had an, an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. But rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, now notice, what, notice this now. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, now notice, this woman, 
She's beginning to prophesy. She's prophesying over her own body. She's prophesying over her own body. Sometimes you just got you just got to start speaking the words of life over your own body. Amen. The Bible said, "For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole." Now notice those words came out of her mouth. Those words came out of her mouth. Amen. For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. She prophesied her own healing. She prophesied her own healing. Amen. You see, now, 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 you got to understand, you got to understand this because this woman, she had been to all the doctors. She had been to all the physicians. She had spent all that she had and she was lying in her bed. She didn't have nowhere to go. She didn't have nothing to do. She was just laying there uh, expecting to just die. And all of a sudden, just like, just like this blind Bonamir's, Jesus came by her, Jesus came down her pathway in just a lick of time. Amen. In just a lick of time, Jesus showed up in her pathway to, toward her house, going by her house. And this woman, she made up her mind. She said, if I may but touch but his clothes. Remember, she began to talk to her own body. She began to talk to her own self. She began to prophesy her own healing. Yes, she did. She began to prophesy her own healing. If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. Amen. Verse number 28. Verse number 28. Mark chapter 5, verse number 28. Amen. Then look what it said in verse number 29. And straightway, the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt, notice, notice this now, and she felt in herself, she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. She felt in her body she was healed of that plague. And I like what it said in verse number 30. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself. You see, he didn't plan on being touched by this woman. He didn't walk this path so this woman could come out and touch him. He was on his way to Jairus house. Amen. He was on his way to this man's house to minister to his daughter because his daughter was, was, was dying. And Jesus was on his way to this man's house to minister to his daughter. Amen. But then this woman heard this commotion about, and, and she said, what's going on? I could imagine. And her friends, her neighbors come in and say, Jesus is passing by your house. She said, what? <laughs> Jesus of Nazareth is passing by my house? Whoa, whoa, if I could just touch his garment, if I could just touch his clothes. I mean, I, if I was this woman, I'd have been so excited. And you need to be excited right now yourself. Amen. You need to be, you need to begin, you need to begin to be excited right now. Because you see, the Lord is, he, 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 he's watching you. He's looking at you right where you are right now. Amen. You might say, well, well, how do you know he's looking at me? Folks. He's looking at your heart. He's looking at your heart. He's looking at your heart. Don't allow the faith of God to lie dormant in your heart. Begin to allow your faith to rise up. Remember, faith, Romans 10, 17, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith is being produced right now. I'm releasing the spirit of faith right now. Amen. I can't make you receive this. I can only release it. You have to receive it. Amen. You have to receive it. So now here it is right here in verse number, verse number 30, verse number 29. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up. And she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself. Notice what he said. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, who touched me? Now, just think, all these people, all these people around him, all these people pushing upon him because they said, you know, they, 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 they've, been, they've, been, they've heard that no matter whoever touched him will be healed. And so many people was, was touching him. So many people was, had, was, was curious if they would touch him, what would happen? Many people was touching him. Amen. But they was not touching him in faith. They were not touching him in faith. This one woman, this one woman, this sick woman, 
pushed herself out of this bed. I imagine she wrapped some clothes around her, a garment or a house coat or something over her. She covered herself. Amen. And she worked her way to the door and she sees this crowd of people. Remember, Brian Bartimaeus, he saw, he, he saw this crowd of people and they told him to be quiet. <laughs> this woman, she didn't, she didn't say anything out loud for these people to hear her. She said within herself, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. Now, you know the difference between her conversation and Blind Bartimaeus' conversation? Blind Bartimaeus, he <clears throat> began to cry out with a loud voice. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. This woman with the issue of blood, she said, if I may but touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. Amen. Now, notice both a similar uh, a situation. Amen. But notice the woman. She was speaking faith over her own body. If I may touch but his clothes. What was she doing? She was building up herself. She was speaking faith over her situation. She was releasing faith over her situation. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. And when she came, the Bible says right here, in verse number, in verse number, verse number 30, now verse number 29, and straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. She felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. Verse number, verse number 30. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him. See, that virtue went out of him because of her faith. That virtue went out of him because of her faith. It was nothing that Jesus did. All Jesus was, Jesus was focused on going to Jairus' house. But this woman, she said, I'm not going to let this man pass by me. This is my breakthrough time. This is my miracle day. I'm going to receive my breakthrough. This is my time. This is my hour. And I'm not going to let it pass by. So many times the Lord shows up and your faith is right on the edge. But you don't act upon your faith. And when you act upon your faith, you don't believe what you are saying yourself. This woman, she believed what she said. She said, if I may but touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. She believed her words. And when she believed her words, when she made her way out to the, looked out to the door, she saw all this crowd of people. That would have been enough for you and me to change our mind. It's too many people. I can't make it to this man. I'm so too weak. How can I get to this man? All this crowd of people. How can I get to this man? We would have talked ourselves right out of it. You and me would have. But this woman, she knew. That if she would not have made it to this man, that she would lost, that would have been her last opportunity for her healing, for her breakthrough. Because she had went to all the doctors. She had spent all of her money. She had nothing. Everything that she had, she had spent it all. She, would, she became a poor woman because she gave all that she had away. And now, only thing that she has is her faith. That's all she has right now. It's her faith. And some of you are the same way right now. You don't have anything. You don't, you just like I was when I was sick. I didn't have no insurance, didn't have any money, didn't have nothing. But I had my Bible. And I had the Word of God. And I believed the Word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. And some of you, you're in that same position. You don't have much, but you got the Word of God. Your faith is all you need. That woman said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. Remember blind bottom else? Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. He, he, he cried out. And Jesus stopped in his tracks because of this man's faith. He believed that Jesus could do it. And that's why he cried out. That's why he cried out. This woman believed that she could be healed. And that's why she spoke it out of her mouth. 
if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. Now notice what it says. Notice what it says right here. In verse number, in verse number 30, it said, And immediately Jesus, knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? He didn't say, Who touched me? He didn't say, Who grabbed my hand? He didn't say, Who who grabbed my shoulder? He didn't say nothing like that. He said, Who touched my clothes? Because this is where the woman faith was at. The woman faith was not in just grabbing his hand. The woman of faith was just in the grabbing of his, the touching of his clothes. If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. Oh, my friend, are you right there today? Are you ready to touch his clothes by faith? Amen. Notice what, notice what it goes on to say here. Verse number 31. And Jesus and his disciples said unto him, Seest thou see the multitude throbbing thee? Does that mean that word throbbing means there's a, a, a lot of people. That means that people are pressing upon him. Amen. Um, people are pressing upon him on every side. Amen. They pressing on him on every side. So he said, See the multitude throbbing thee, and then sayest thou who touched me? And he he looked around about to see her that had done this thing. Notice what he said. He looked around about to see her that had done this thing. Verse number 33. This is Mark chapter 5, verse number 33. But the woman fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, I feel this. I feel it. Someone right now is re someone right now. God is touching you right now. Amen. God is touching you right now. You have a loved one. You believe in God for your loved one. Someone right now, your faith is being released. You, you the spirit of God is, has ignited your, you have, I'm, you have, you, I mean, you, have, you, you right there. It's yours now. Receive it. Receive it. Glory to God. Notice what it says right here. Verse number, verse number uh, 31. And his disciples said unto him, seest thou the mother too thriving thee and seest thou who touched me? And he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, notice what he said? The woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down. Notice what he, she did? She came and fell down. She came and fell down. Hallelujah. Amen. Notice, notice here. Notice here what it says here. Verse number 33, once again. But the woman fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And told him all the truth. And she, and, and, and he said unto her, daughter, notice what he said, daughter, same thing he told blind bottom is, thy faith had made thee whole. You see, that's why it's so important, folks, that we get the word, because you see, the word is what we have to depend on. The word is the, is the product that we are searching for because it's the word that has the ability to heal and to deliver and to set the captives free. Amen. The kingdom of God suffered violence, but the violence must take it by force. You got to come like you know what you're coming for. And you got to come in faith. You got to come in faith. God has your breakthrough just for you right now. Amen. The woman, verse number 34, and she and he and he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. Then he said, Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. Of thy plague. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So often we come to the point of our breakthrough. We come to the point of our healing. We come to the threshold of our miracle, then all of a sudden we give up 
we quit and we turn with a, a sad faith, thinking that God had forgotten about us. When all along, it wasn't God forgetting us. We just didn't have enough faith to press on in. We got to press on to the mark of the prize of the high calling, looking unto Jesus as the author and the finisher of our faith. We cannot stop just because it don't look like it's going to happen. The devil doesn't want you to, 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 to keep pressing in. He's going to cause a uh, doubt and fear and unbelief to rise up within you. You got to cast down every vain imagination and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. You got to know that it is God's will for you to be healed. You got to know that no weapon formed against you shall prosper and every tongue that rises up against you in judgment shall be condemned. God has already made it possible for you to receive everything that you ever need for him to bring to live an overcoming life in you through you right now this is your year this is your time this is your season receive your breakthrough right now receive your miracle right now in the name of jesus this is your hour this is your season this is god's this is this is your greatest time right now that you could ever right now in jesus name in pakistan receive your miracle in, in, in India, receive your breakthrough. Amen. Right here in California, receive your breakthrough. In Alabama, receive your breakthrough. In Tennessee, receive your breakthrough. In Hawaii, receive your breakthrough. All of you that are listening from Philippines, receive your breakthrough right now in Jesus' name. Oh, glory to God. This is your season. This is your season. This is, your season. This is for you. Receive it now. In the name of Jesus, I'm going to, I'm, I'm telling you right now, just, just, just tune in. You just tuning in right now. Release your faith. Release your faith right now. Say this with me. Say, Jesus, I will receive my healing. I will receive it now. Today is my breakthrough day. Go ahead and say it. Jesus, I will receive my healing. I receive it right now. Today is my breakthrough day. <clears throat> That's right. Today is my breakthrough day. Amen. Say it again. Today is my breakthrough day. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's right. This is your breakthrough. This is your time. This is your season. Don't let the devil stop you. Don't doubt the word of God. God is speaking to our hearts and it's time for you to open up your heart and receive what God is saying. This is your season. Receive it now. In Jesus' name. Father, I thank you right now, Father, for everyone under the sound of my voice. Father, I release right now this miracle breakthrough power. I bind up every demonic force right now that will try to interfere with their healing. I bind up that demonic force right now that will try to stop them from receiving their breakthrough. Father, I declare right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm to so kotola bakai. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, I pray for that minister, Lord God. I pray for that man of God, that woman of God, Father, that is dealing with that heart problem. I come against that heart problem right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I release your miracle touch right now in the name of Jesus. Father, touch every person right now that having that got heart problems right now in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for it right now in Jesus' name. Father, I come against that cancer. I rebuke that cancer right now in the name of Jesus. I come against that tumor. I rebuke that tumor. I command you to leave that person right now in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father, right now that your word is alive and health and healing to all our flesh. And therefore, I release my faith, God. I declare and decree that every person under the sound of my voice, Father, in the name of Jesus, uh, Go shake Receive your healing. Receive your healing right now in the name of Jesus. Receive it right now in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. And Father, I thank you. <clears throat> I thank you, Father, that every person that truly believes in their hearts right now, and I know many are believing, many are releasing their faith right now, Father. 
And truly, as they release their faith, Father, according to their faith, let them receive their healing right now. According to their faith, like you told blind Bartimaeus, and like you told the one with the issue of blood, according to their faith, let them receive right now in Jesus' name. Oh, the virtue, I, 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 I feel the virtue right now leaving my, leaving my hands right now. God's healing power right now is, is, is being pulled on right now. Receive your touch, receive your healing right now in Jesus' name. Receive it. There it is. There it is. Now, Father, I thank you. Now, just praise God. Begin to worship God. Father, we worship you. We praise you. We give you glory, Lord God. We thank you that it's done in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Well, I've enjoyed sharing with you today. Now, you need to keep joining me. Whenever you see me coming on right here, especially on the night sections, this is the time to join me because I'm more likely going to be teaching on healing. And I'm getting ready to start teaching on uh, very soon. Amen. I'm getting ready to start teaching on uh, 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 deliverance from demonic influence. I'm getting ready to start teaching on deliverance from demonic influence. How many of you know that sickness and disease are demonically influenced? Amen. So we're going to start teaching on demonic, uh, uh, delivered, being delivered from demonic influence. We're going to start teaching that very soon. Right now, I'm preparing myself for this area of ministry. This is something that I used to walk in before I came to California. Amen. And uh, when I was working with this church here in California, whenever they needed someone to be set free from demonic influence, they would ask me to go in the back room with that person. Amen. And, and, uh, and, and they would be amazed at what God would do back there. Amen. Because I serve a God that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. I love you guys. I thank you all for joining us today. And uh, begin, you know, just continue to pray for me as I'm praying for you in the name of Jesus. And uh, let's continue to come together and let us begin to minister to one another. Amen. You have people that you can minister to right now. Amen. Just start ministering to them the same way that you've been ministered to yourself. Just start ministering to those people. And you'll be surprised that you, as a believer, how God will use you to set people free from sicknesses and disease. Amen. God love you. I love you. And until the next time, be blessed. This is Pastor Larry, New Life in Christ Jesus Church of Sacramento, California. Amen. God bless you. Now, if any of you was touched, if any of you received your healing during these lessons, I would appreciate it if y'all would just let me know. Amen. I would like to have your testimony and share your testimony. Amen. With others. Amen. It would be a blessing. God bless you because I, I, know, I know that God is touching lives. And I would, love, I would love to be able to share that. Amen. God bless you until the next time. Amen. What days are you live, brother? Oh, I'm live. I'm, you just got the, I'm, I'm live all the time. <laughs> I'm alive all the time. Amen. Because the word of God is, is in me and I, and I love to share it. Amen. So just join me whenever you can, Johnny. God bless you. Until that time, be blessed. Amen. God bless you. Bye-bye. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh my God. Jesus.
vezes, 